So 11 lies you cannot tell when selling your home. Guys, feel free to chime in on this. Yeah, you ready? This one's going to be very real. All right, so when you're, dis- when you're filling out the disclosure, which is required in most cities around the country and maybe around the world, they're asking you questions, and you can't fib about this stuff. So, for example, lead-based paint. If your house was built prior to 1978, federal law requires that you disclose whether or not you are aware right. of the presence of lead-based paint, which is is it terrible for kids to be yeah. eating chips, and that's where the problem comes into play. Right. I tell you a, a funny quick story. Back in 1980, I was a reporter for Channel 13 in Baltimore, WJZ-TV, and I had done a story about this particular subject, and I had used at the we do stand ups. You stand up, it basically is on camera. And I said in my clothes, the stand up clothes, I said, and these guys and gals can be assured they're never going to have this problem again, have having eaten lead based paint. Well, I get back to the station after that aired, and the co anchor on the show was a woman by the name of Oprah Winfrey. You may have heard of her. Ah. Heard of her. So Oprah was there, and there were some other great people. They're just a fabulous. And Oprah was, I loved her. I still love her dearly. But she said to me, Bob, listen, gals is a derogatory term for African American women. And I said, I never knew that. But she said, yeah, no, really, serious. Don't ever use. I said, and I've never done that again. This was 1980? 1980, 1980, yeah. Yeah, so anyway, anytime I read anything about lead-based paint, it brings back, you know, and and Oprah wasn't the name that she is now, but um, she was kind enough just to kind of call me over to the corner to just say, hey, listen, don't do that because here's why. And I, 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 I've always loved her as a, as a friend. She's a great lady. Also, in most states, sellers are required to disclose the presence of any type of pest infest- infestation, including, and I don't think here in Louisville, bats, mice, no? I don't, th- I don't believe so. Bed bugs, we know it, yeah. no. We've, said, we've yeah, already talked right. about this. So that's kind of interesting. If you try to be sneaky and hide the problem, you could be facing a lawsuit in some states. Not so much in Louisville. That's interesting. Many sellers fear that disclosing past water damage will send a potential buyer running. But if you fail to disclose, the seller risks scaring off buyers when a home inspection uncovers evidence of the damage. And it's called, what is it, effervescence? or Well, efflorescence Efflorescence. on the the brick. But we can also test to see if the moisture is still there. You may have a stain, but it's completely dry because it's been fixed. Yes. So, you know, that's not always... You know, and then it, painting it and covering up the basement doesn't do you much good because now inspectors and the buyer are a little suspicious. Yes. So you want to, you want to, I always say, and Kev, you, you agree, be so upfront, mm-hmm. disclose everything that can't come back to bite you in the end. Well, and, and this being Louisville, Kentucky, in most areas that, you know, we talked about the rain, was it 97? Yeah. I mean, I don't care where you were at. It you had some flush. water. Intru- I mean, it, yeah. it, your sump pump couldn't keep up to it. So I think the best thing is be honest and upfront because if you say that there was none yeah. and he comes and does an inspection, he discloses it, you've lost all credibility at that he, point. Yeah. 97, I was in a boat. I was a reporter working over a Channel 11 anchor and also in the 97 with Louisville Tonight Live. They had us out on a boat on River Road, and the boat was as high as the top of the power pole. So next wow. time you're driving River Road, just think about, look at the top briefly if you're driving, the top of the power poles. And no, I was in a boat mm. just riding along doing a story at a couple of places that were still had people in them that were on high uh, ground over there. Stigmatized homes in some states, sellers must inform potential buyers if unpleasant events such as suicides, murders, cult activity ever occurred in the home. Louisville? I believe that if it affects marketability, it is supposed to be disclosed. I don't don't remember seeing specifically suicide or murder. Okay. Uh, You know, there are specific things about drug paraphernalia, the the, the fumes, things like that. If you ever state, if your state doesn't require disclosing that a house is stigmatized, it's a good idea, idea still to tell the truth. And when we work with Asian clients, they ask on a regular basis, has this house ever had this or that? Because it's part of that culture. Also, a termite damage, treating a house for termites is expensive, and if fresh termite activity is found in the structure of your home, the buyer's lender may refuse to loan money on the house until the, the stuff's been treated and damage has been repaired. And I know yeah. you don't actually test, but you bring in people to test for termite or look for termites, right? Right. Yeah, most yeah. home inspections will have a, uh, a termite clearance letter that will come along with it, and we'll subcontract that out to the pest control companies. Got it. 
Most communities have permit regulations. So this is really a stickler on this, folks. Mm -hmm. If you remodeled your home without a permit, it's understandable that you may be leery about revealing it. While you might not think anyone will notice, failure to disclose this fact will get you busted nearly every time. Your local building authority reports construction changes to the county register of deeds, which is how they know you've increased or changed the value of your home, which means your values go up. You need to th- pull things like what a, p- a permit for electrical to have that inspected before closing up the walls if you or are doing something or it's being done professionally, as an example. Yeah, the professionals would have to have you know license or, or a, a code sticker for any of that. Now, the home inspection won't be looking for any of those code type. No, but you'll look for the sticker, we'll won't you? Sticker. We, will, we will not look for the sticker. Oh, you the, won't look no, for the sticker? No, the sticker okay. could have been installed 15 years ago. Uh-huh. We've, well, we've, seen, we've seen electrical panels that are actually now with the green code sticker yeah. inside shower stalls. Oh, really? So, no, we are in Kentucky. We are expressly forbidden uh, from citing any sort of code well, violation. This comes up a couple times before where they go out and they say that there's no sticker. And we've had personally an electrician yeah. wants to get paid before the sticker because it's apparently a little bit of a hassle and a little bit of time. But we've had a few before. If the sticker's not there, then the seller has to go through the process of getting it there. And they may have paid the electrician already. But unless the sticker is there, we can't close it. Yeah, and that would have that would have had to do with any sort of work that had been done as part of a, a remodel or um, you know new panels being installed. Yeah, that would be outside okay. the scope of a home inspection. Yeah. So roof damage, that's a problem you need to disclose. Replacement, they asked that a number of times. Appliance problems, you want to disclose. Natural hazards like a sinkhole or earthquake zone, you got to disclose. Ongoing disputes with neighbors that are problem with boundary lines. You got to disclose, and also known mechanic, mechanical problems, wiring, plumbing, HVAC systems. They ask you several different ways. Are there any problems? So just those, those are some of the things that are pretty important. Those are lies you cannot tell when you are selling your home. 